this week. I had been running one and a half mile for the last couple weeks and I decided this week I'm gonna go for two miles. But I have an issue with my knee, just like a little nagging pain that's always been there. So I was a little bit afraid to up the ante, but we're gonna give it a try and see. to get ready for work, uh, not work, church. I gotta be super quick with this. My face, I took a shower, but my face is still super red from my run. It'll simmer down in a little bit here. But I wanted to talk to you guys today about a concept that is not new, but kind of just evolved for me. I always thought that self-care was something that was along the lines of like equating it with money, you know? It's kind of one of those buzzwords that people like to use. And I always thought self-care was like, oh, self-care, I just went and got a facial, or oh, self-care, I just went and had a massage, or went to the nail salon, or you know, treat yourself, self-care. That's kind of what I thought self-care was. And I always felt like, you know, that was something that wasn't really realistic for me. Number one, because those things are expensive, but number two, because it requires resources like childcare that I don't necessarily have. If I do, it's super hit or miss. But after talking to my therapist, she kind of explained to me that that is definitely just one you know, that might be one person's version of self-care, but that there's self-care can look like so many different things. And I thought it was basically just something that you like splurge on for yourself, you know? Um, I don't know, I guess I just didn't really have a healthy understanding of what self-care was. But my therapist kind of explained it to me. Self-care is anything, number one, that you want it to be. So whatever your interests are, whatever something that you like to do that's just totally about you. And she also explained to me, you don't have to have money and you don't have to have resources to be able to indulge in self-care. She explained to me that really, whatever it is, it's just something that you dedicate a certain amount of your day for you. So if you just wanna go walk around Target, not necessarily buy anything, but just, I'm gonna take 30 minutes, you know, while my kid's in school or whatever in therapy or whatever, I'm going to take 30 minutes to go walk around Target and just look. And there's not really a purpose behind it. It's just something that you want to do and you're taking time for yourself. So for some reason, that didn't really sound super appealing to me. I mean, it's fun window shopping. Don't get me wrong. But it just didn't sound like super exciting to me. And I, it kind of took me so, like a while to think about what is like something that I can do for myself that would be considered self-care. And also, it took my therapist pointing out to me that, it took my therapist pointing out to me that the reason self-care is so important, because I just kind of wrote it off, like whatever, it's not that big of a deal. But she kind of pointed out to me, no, it is a big deal, and you need to take it seriously because you have to fill up your own cup. You're depleted right now. You know, I would be like just overwhelmed and stressed out and burned out and just feeling like I'm failing in certain aspects of my life. And she explained to me, it's because you're de depleted. You have to fill up your own cup. You have to take care of yourself. You got to put your own oxygen mask on first so that you can t be a better mom for your son. Because at the end of the day, that's all I really care about. I'm like, I don't care about my own interests. I don't care about my own, you know, hobbies or indulging, indulgence or anything like that. I just want to be a good mom for Kidale. Like, I know that sounds corny and like I'm full of it, but honest to God, that's really all I care about. Like, if he's happy and he's content 
I'm happy and I'm content. But again, she explained to me, well, in order to achieve those things, in order to be a good mom, you gotta put your oxygen mask on first, you gotta fill up your own cup because right now you're depleted and you've got to fill it back up. So that kind of planted the seed for me and just got me thinking like, well, what is something I can do because I, I don't have childcare and you know, I, I can't just bring kiddo, when, <laughs> whenever I do bring him places sometimes like Target or whatever, it, it's not relaxing, let's just say that. It's fun, but it's not super relaxing. So it kind of planted the seed for me and it made me start thinking like, what could be my version of self-care? And it took me a while to think of some ideas of like, what do I enjoy? What, you know, what, what would be something for me that would just be about me? It wouldn't be about Kdale, it wouldn't be about anybody else. It would be something for me that I wanna do. And I started running. I have a treadmill in my garage, but it's hit or miss when I use it. You know, sometimes when you get in those ruts and you're inactive and you just can't seem to get the motivation to get going again, well, I kind of just forced myself to get there. And I started running every day. I just started doing like a mile a day. And then after a couple of weeks of that, I started doing a mile and a half a day. And I feel so good. I feel so good about that. Not only because, you know, exercise releases all kind of endorphins and it's just good for your body. But I also just feel really good about putting the mom guilt to the side and taking some time to do something for me. And what I mean by that is, you know, I take, I work eight, 10 hour, sometimes even 12 hour days. And kiddo is out of the condo, you know, he's stimulated in, in therapy and his schooling program. So for part of my work day, he deals out of the house and engaging in activities. But for a large part of the day, he's just kind of hanging out in the background while I work. And I feel so guilty about that. I hate having to ignore him for large amounts of time while I work. And I know that's silly because I have to provide for him, but I still just have mom guilt. And again, I know this sounds silly, but when I can't give him like my undivided attention, I just struggle with that. Like I feel guilty because I feel disconnected from him. That's really what it comes down to. Whenever I start feeling disconnected from kiddo, I, I feel so like, like I just feel so uneasy with that. I hate that feeling. I want to be connected with him. I want to be close with him, you know? Um, and so, yeah, so I struggle a lot with mom guilt relating to working. And so the last thing I want to do when I get done working is eat up more of my time by, you know, going to exercise or spending time by myself, um, doing self care. So, I just had to put it to the side. I just had to tell myself, he's fine. He will be okay for 20 more minutes for you to go run in your treadmill. I just had to force myself into that mind frame of, you've gotta put your oxygen mask on first. So that's one big area of self-care. Um, I've also just enjoyed taking some time to wake up a little bit early and have a quiet cup of coffee every day. And sometimes those simple things like that, for me, can make all the difference with how your day gets started. You know, if you can just wake up a little bit earlier to um, read a chapter of a book or, you know, have a cup of, a quiet cup of coffee or something like that, that's another area that I've tried working on in my life and I've tried adding to my daily routine that makes a huge difference. And another thing that I didn't even realize was self-care, but my therapist pointed it out to me, was me and Cadell started going back to church. And it's something that for me, I love doing. I was raised going to church. and But going to church is something that has just kind of fallen off for us because of my work schedule. You know, I work a lot of weekends. It's required to rotate weekends or work a certain amount of hours, I have to be weekend hours. And I try to be as like people pleasing as possible with my job and 
you know, flexible and available for whatever the needs are for the company. Um, but again, with that, putting others first, you know, sometimes you just got to put yourself first. So I asked off Sundays and I asked like, I'll work Saturdays, but can I please have Sundays off? And they accommodated that. So that was really cool. And also the local um, church that I used to go to, I discovered that they have a special needs Sunday school classroom. So Cato can go to Sunday school with his peers and there's really nice adults that are in there running that classroom. And, um, and then I get to go have a little bit of, you know, alone time and listen to a really good sermon. So it's a win-win. Um, you know, I get alone time. I get my cup filled by listening to, um, you know, a preacher, a preacher talk for an hour. And then we get to go out to lunch afterwards or go hang out and do something that we want to do, go to the park or whatever. So, um, I didn't even think about that as being self-care and I was just kind of casually telling my therapist said that was something we started doing. And she was like, you did it. You found a method of self-care. Like you had to go out of your way to rearrange your schedule, to plan on providing yourself with something that you benefit from, that you want to do, you get benefit from, you know, you had to like actively make arrangements for that to happen. And that's, self-care. And I was like, cool. I feel so accomplished. Okay, we've got breakfast in hand. Hold on, kiddo. Show the vlog your hands and outfit. Look how full of how handsome you are. Ready for church. You're the most handsome, awesome, coolest kid ever, and I love you. Cool. Okay, we'll go to Sunny's after church. All right, get your breakfast. You're silly goose. Come on, Bubba. Oh, you gotta get your shoes on. Here. Get your shoes on. And then let's go to church. You can take your purple water. struggling this morning with just not really wanting to go um, you know I think after a long week of clinic and school he's just kind of pooped and he just doesn't really want to go to a uh, you know it's not that Sunday school is different but in a way it's kind of similar to what he does during the week with you know going in a little classroom and um, learning listening to somebody talk I don't know so I gave him the benefit of the doubt, you know, he just wasn't really a whole lot in the mood. And uh, yeah, I rubbed him with some, some Sunnies barbecue because that's his favorite. And you know, we all need a little motivation from time to time. So I appreciated him going and letting mama go and sit in service. And now we're gonna go have a good time at, at uh, the table, which is what Kiddo calls it. If he doesn't know the name of a restaurant, he just calls it the table.
He now has discovered his newfound love for chicken wings. It's his absolute favorite thing ever. Barbecue chicken wings. He loves them. Whoa! And are we ready? Um. I've been trying to get Kiddo to work on ordering his own drinks. Um, and then, you know, maybe starting to order his own meals too. He certainly has the words for it, but you know, hold on. He certainly has the words for it, but when you're used to mommy ordering for you, you just don't think to, right? But we're at 13 now. We're a big boy. Yeah. Hey you're a teenager. Yeah. So that's what we're working on. Communicating with strangers, other people in public at restaurants. All right, are we ready to go? There you go. Okay, Dale. Hey. All right, you gotta come back over here. You can't go in that part right there. Okay, cool Florida thing. We stopped by this uh, local park, Green Cove Park, and there is a pool that is fed by a natural spring. How neat is that for a Florida activity? Obviously you can't swim in the spring, but that's it. They just built around it and it feeds right into the pool over there. Kato, let's go. Come over here with mama. Kato's ready to go, but I want to show y'all real quick what the pool feeds into. Come here, buddy. So the spring feeds into the pool, which feeds into this little creek. <sighs> which feeds out to the river, which is down there, the St. John's River. All right, you want to go to the dollar store? Okay, let's go to the dollar store. All right. We got the kind of outskirts of a hurricane a few days ago, a hurricane that blew through. So there's like all these branches and debris everywhere throughout the community. It wasn't too bad, just a little windy, a little rainy, but uh, we definitely didn't get it too bad. Oh, heaven's sakes. All right, that pool, me and Kiddo have been to it a couple times. It's a community pool, so it's a public pool. That's what I meant. Yeah, it's like a community public pool. And it only costs a couple bucks. I don't know like the exact price, but it's only a few bucks. And uh, we've been to it a couple times, but the water is cold because it's spring fed. So it is, it is pretty chilly and it's only open seasonally during the summer, but that's a fun option for summer activities. You don't want any water? All right, dollar store time. Next on the agenda is the dollar store. Me and Cadell are suckers for a good dollar store. And there's one right by the park. So we're gonna hop out and get a few things for the condo and look around. So much to choose from. Look at all these good snacks. Halloween section. Can't go wrong here. Oh, these are good. I like to get these little coloring kits. They're only a dollar. Yeah, that's what I mean. Okay, here's what I want to pick out. Let's pick out a card. Here, pick out one for Polly and one for Eli. Come here. Kiddo. Pick out two cards. Hey, hey, okay, Dale. One for Polly and one for Eli. Pick out two. One, two. Okay, that's a good one. One more. Pick out one more. Well, that says grandson. 
a different one. Come here. Eli is not our grandson. He's your he's your cousin. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. It's got a pumpkin on it. I like that one. Did you get a couple books? Oh, Thomas. Look at that. Thomas the train. The dollar store is so underrated. I mean, you know, love. Walk around, see what kind of knickknacks we can find. And I like to get my, some of my household items, like my soaps and my um, Ziploc bags, sandwich bags, things like that, because it's just so cheap. Some old lady that was squeezing by us in the aisle at the dollar store was like, she had tugged me on the arm and she and she said in her vest, she was like, it looks like a bomb went off in here because <laughs> it was kind of messy. And I was like, yeah, oh, I know. But secretly, that's what me and kiddo like about it because it's not uptight, you know? It's laid back. We don't have to worry about anything. We don't have to worry about expensive breakables, right? It's just fun to go explore. Okay, we're back home now. And we're actually a little bit tired from all the various activities today. So I think we're just gonna rest and hang out for the rest of the day. But don't forget to take some time for yourself and really think about ways that you can fill up your own cup and invest in your own self-care activities um, because it's really important and you deserve it. You deserve to not be running on fumes all the time. You deserve to not feel depleted all the time. So. Think about some ways that you can invest in your own self-care and your own mental health and fill up your own cup. And thank you guys, as usual, for watching. We appreciate y'all very much, and we'll see you next vlog.